Just look at this thing. It's far from pretty, but it is necessary. At least it was before Angular released the new signal view queries, which allow us to query the template and get the result as a signal. The reason this code was necessary is that I was doing something declaratively. This is an example of one of the rarer times where, although I still think the benefits are worth the effort, this is undoubtedly ugly and awkward and an unfortunate necessity to make the code in this situation declarative. The general idea here is that for one of the applications in my Angular Start course, we work with this video player that plays GIFs. When you click on one of these GIFs, which are actually videos, it will begin loading that video. When this is happening, we display this little spinner to indicate that the load is currently in progress. So we have some UI state that needs to react to a video load start event in the DOM being triggered. An imperative way to do this, which arguably would be simpler to code in this case, would be to set up a callback function for the load start event and then imperatively set the loading state. Even though this might be a simpler way to think about coding this initially, the complexity with imperative code comes later. It's similar to how just plug it in is a reasonable strategy when you have one cable or maybe even five, but it doesn't take long before the benefits of cable management become apparent. Anyone with a desktop computer setup probably knows this. When you are forced to sort through a tangled mess of cords, you start to wonder whether you really need that USB powered mug warmer after all. Same goes with adding new features to imperative code. The friction for new features is much higher. With a declarative approach, the load start event just happens and anything that cares about that event happening will automatically react to it without needing manual imperative calls to make those things happen. So that's the justification for this ugly code, but it really is ugly in this case. And a lot of that is to do with the awkwardness of trying to use the decorator based view child queries reactively. And reactivity is to declarative code as five volt USB power is to consistently hot coffee. You need reactivity in order to create declarative code. The old decorator based view child is not reactive. If I try to grab this video element, which is where our load start event will come from, it will be undefined until after the view has been initialized. So we can't just immediately reference its value. This is why you'd often see initialization code related to view queries inside of ng after view init, because at that point, the thing you are trying to grab would be defined. But this doesn't really work for our declarative style approach where we want everything to be defined within its initial declaration which means it needs to happen at constructor time, not after the view initialization happens. So we mimic a reactive approach by using a setter and we set the query into a signal whenever it changes, which is a reactive mechanism. But it is still awkward because even though we have it in a reactive mechanism now, the initial value will still be undefined. So we need this filter and type guard that will filter out any undefined values and coerce the valid values into being the correct type, an HTML video element. Now we finally have something we can reliably access to get a reference to the video element in the template. And from there, we can reactively switch to whatever events we want to listen to from that element. However, with the new signal based view queries, we can just do this and we're done. No setters and proxy reactive mechanisms, no undefined values and filters and coercing types. It just works basically how you would want it to work. If you want to see more videos like this, feel free to leave a like and subscribe before you go. Uh, if you want to build the entire application from this video, check out my Angular Start course, and I hope to see you back here again.